Now we are going to write a more complex application using the scene builder. Uh, and this is the application that we're going to write. So here in the text field, I can write some text. And when I either hit return in the text field or click add, uh, the add button, uh, the um, text is appended to the text area. To co close the application, I can either click cancel, which means nothing happens, or run it again. Again, enter some text. and then click the OK button. And then the text that was in the text field is printed here to stand it out. So again, looking at the application, there are some more features. First, there are tooltips. If I place the uh, cursor above a component, uh, there's a short help text for that component. OK. Uh, then uh, there's also a counter down in the bottom of the uh, window there is a counter saying uh, how many mm, lines of text have been added. So I again uh, write something and uh, each time I add a new line of text the counter is incremented. Now there are three lines of text. Furthermore there is a maximum number of uh, lines that can be added. The default is three but there's also a command line parameter uh, that can override the default. And now I have set the command line parameter to seven, meaning that uh, seven lines of text can be added. So now there are three, four, five, six, seven. And when the seventh was added, the uh, uh, text field and the add button are disabled. So let's have a look at how to set command line parameters for a JavaFX application. So this is in fact the application. So in the properties, I look at the run tab. And here there is the uh, um, field parameters. So um, to change that, click edit. And here, are, here is the parameter. It's an key, the param parameter is a key value pair. So I can um, add a new one, or whatever. Let's remove it again and cancel. OK, so that's how to set the command line parameter for a JavaFX application. Uh, last thing to show, uh, OK, let's cancel that one and start it again. So last thing I want to show uh, regarding this uh, application is that uh, you can press a button by hitting return when the button has focus. Uh, that's normal behavior of any GUI, right? But you have to, it, it's not automatic. You have to do something to make it behave like that. And that's why I'm showing that th this application has this feature. So if I add, uh, write something here, hit return in the text field, it's added. Now I want to click OK. But of course, I cannot just hit uh, return now because the text field has the focus. So it just will add more lines. But if I tab to the OK button, hit return, then the OK button was uh, clicked, and here is the output. OK, so that's the application we're going to write. So to write it, let's first create a new application. It's a JavaFX application, a JavaFX FX, FXML application, actually, because when using the scene builder, we create uh, uh, the GUI uh, XML based, not in, in Java code. Um, right? So let's call it um, text adder. And the name of the uh, F, uh, XML document could be, um, no, let's call it instead um, text adder FXML. Uh, and the main class could be um, sc.kph.id2212 dot uh, jfx as in javafx dot text adder right okay so we create the application three files were created the uh, java file uh, that uh, holds the main method that launches the entire application. 
uh, what does that um, class do? It uh, holds the start method. That, that's about it. Uh, and uh, the start method uh, creates the root of the scene graph by loading the um, fxml document. Here is the path to the fxml document. And then creates the, the scene, uh, sets the scene, places the scene in the stage and shows the stage. That's it. Uh, the text adder fxml, we okay it's an xml file but uh, we will uh, edit it mainly using the uh, scene builder so let's not dig into that one. And the controller, here, here we will place the um, um, event handlers. Cleaning up a bit. Um, contains the event handlers. Uh, and in the controller we see this um, uh, fxml annotation that's required by any uh, field or method that can be accessed by the uh, fxml runtime. Let's clean up it also here. Um, creates the uh, not creates the GUI, but uh, starts uh, the um, uh, text adder application. Um, command line arguments. The application takes one com one parameter. parameter max lines which specifies the number of lines of text like this let's start creating the GUI then so first let me just mention that I renamed uh, these files I think they were including fxml in the file name was a bit redundant so now now the names are better I think Okay, let's create the GUI by using the scene builder and it started by double clicking the fxml file. Oops, not triple clicking. <laughs> okay, so uh, when the project was created, there was a very simple GUI uh, created as well. So let's just remove that one. Uh, delete, I right clicked and then also delete this pane. So now it's empty. Okay, we will start with a grid pane in the bottom and for some strange reason it, I think it's a bug it often places the window like this uh, 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 I mean the grid pane like this uh, besides the, the uh, stage let's close save so now the grid pane uh, is correctly placed um, let's have a look at the uh, GUI we are building in the bottom there was the grid pane, so let's start by adding this uh, text uh, at the top. So that text is actually just a text element. Let's search for the text. Here it is. Um, it should be placed in the uh, top row, that's right. Uh, let's change the text. Right, uh, text line. Okay, it's there. To center the text, uh, we choose the H alignment property. Uh, if we don't find it in all, all this, uh, all this, uh, this whole list here that is quite extensive, uh, we can search here H alignment, and it should be center not very centered as you can see here still to the left but that's because it was centered in the column where it's located it's located in column zero uh, but we want it to span both columns so we should change that it's called call span or something like that um, column span okay here it is uh, change that to two there, now it's centered. 
Uh, so now let's talk a bit about columns and rows before we continue. Uh, so the thing, the idea is to uh, split this thing into two uh, columns like this. So every, everything that, that's to the left of the blue line should be in column zero. Everything that's to the right should be in column one. And things that are split uh, blue line that are both to the left and to the right should be uh, in both columns. That is, have a column span two. So as you can see, the columns are not uh, evenly shaped. And, and that's because we, we are going to specify how uh, um, various components grow. So that way we can make them the column vary in width on different rows. Okay, so for the rows then, there will be that's more straightforward. Rows will be like this. Okay, so now we fixed the first row uh, with the text. In the next row, uh, there should be um, a label to the left in column uh, zero and a text field to the right in column one. Okay, now for the text in uh, row one, uh, yeah, row one, column zero. Uh, sorry, label, it should be a label. There it is, the label. It should not be there, but here, uh, and the Okay, let's close that one. The label text should be text to add. Text to add. Right, <coughs> but it should be not uh, left justified as now. But so we change it to right justified. It should not change here in the uh, properties tab because that will justify the text in the label. Uh, instead, we shall change in the layout pane, H alignment, right. So there, now it's to the right. Okay, next is a text field, the same row, but column one. It went up there, but it should be down here. Let's let the text field uh, occupy the entire width of the column. Uh, but we should specify it to grow. When there is room for uh, the text field to grow, it should grow like this, thereby moving the label further out to the left. Uh, so that's the age grow property. Uh, next, let's add the add button. So button is here. It should go in next row in column one. Okay, and it should be centered under the text field. Uh, so we try to center this one, look in layout. Okay, you must be prepared for some experimenting when setting all these properties. Just a bit, bit of the trial and error. So it should be the H alignment to center, that's fine. The button text is up here. Add. Uh, we need to give the button an ID because we are later going to attach an event handler. And when we do that, it must have an ID. Let's give it an ID right away. Let's call it add button. Next, uh, the text field. We need a new row for that. Um, new row and then the text field text field no not text field text area let's remove that one there the text area should span two columns like that, it should grow. Um, okay, it should grow both vertically and horizontally when there's room. We want it to take uh, as much place as there is in the window. Um, always, always. Oops! Now it grow a lot. 
maybe we shouldn't allow it to grow vertically let's not do that uh, so sometimes means it grows if, if there's nothing else uh, that always grows let's keep it like this maybe later we when we have uh, set uh, designed it a bit better we can re re reset it to uh, grow also uh, vertically but for now let's keep it like this okay then the okay and cancel button that should go below uh, we need one more row and row below now the uh, columns are not evenly spaced but we want the the uh, buttons to be centered below the text area which occupies both column uh, 0 and 1 so how, how to center them uh, over both columns uh, we cannot add them directly like this instead we need we need to add an H box which is um, um, a pane that uh, uh, lays out its components in one line uh, a horizontal line of components so that one should span two columns now it occupies everything here uh, and in that one we place the buttons button so it just places them in order no grid here just in order okay but they should stay to the right and they should be um, vertically centered so to do that we need to change something uh, about the regarding the um, uh, H box alignment should be center center <laughs> like this no sorry <laughs> There we are. Okay, they are very much attached. It would be nice with some space between the buttons. Uh, so that's the spacing property. There, now there's some space in between the uh, buttons here. Okay, so it's uh, Im important to um, un uh, understand the difference between um, the properties pane, uh, which means the properties for the actual thing you're placing, you're um, designing and layout which is properties for the thing below uh, the pane where the component you are placing is located that is how the component is laid out and code down here that's for event handlers for access from java code and the button text first should be okay and the second should be cancel They also need IDs because we are going to add event handlers for them as well. So now the cancel button has focus. Cancel button. And the OK button, let's call that one OK button. Uh, actually, we need um, an ID for the text field as well because that's uh, also going to have an event handler uh, the line should be added when the user hits enter and the text field has focus um, uh, text to add uh, field and we need uh, an ID for the uh, text area uh, because uh, we're going to update it from the event handler it's, it, it will be um, Exa uh, reference from Java code when text is added to it. Um, all text area, the line with the bottom text at the bottom. This one is still missing. Let's add that one. So we need one more row still. Add row below. There we place a text. It occupies two columns and is centered. I mean, let's let leave the text as it is text. I mean, essentially written here. Let's not change that because it's going the text is going to be written from the java code it will, it's not hard coded and the reason for that is that we have to uh, 
update the counter here. Uh, so therefore, since it will be accessed from Java code, it must have an ID. Uh, number of added lines text. And let's preview, see what it looks like now. <laughs> Not very nice at all. Okay, one, one thing is, uh, of course, we need to uh, fix the size. Uh, uh, but an another thing is that um, we should have some margin, which is um, area around the borders where there are no components. So some empty area there th that will look nice. Uh, so we had some padding, 25 pixels and padding all over there. Some nice empty area at the border. And also for this one, we add some space between the components. Okay, so let's add the space. It's the H gap and the V gap. There, now there's some space between the rows and the columns. And let's preview. Um, still not very nice. Okay, we got some space between the components. What if we reshape a little? Let's make the uh, text field grow also um, vertically. Maybe that would, will make it better. Save, preview. Yeah, maybe that makes a bit more sense. Now let's add the behavior to the program. So let's start with the add button here. So when the add button is clicked, the text from the text field should be appended to the text currently in the text area. To do that, we need an event handler. So let's focus this one over here. We add code hooks uh, on action. It's the action event that we're going to capture. So let's call uh, this method add handler. Okay, so now when the button is clicked, uh, a method in the controller called add handler will be invoked. Um, but have we loaded the controller? Um, controller class. Yeah, this now when the button is clicked, the on action method is triggered and the add handler method in this controller over here is going to be invoked. So that means we have to write the add handler. Okay, uh, the add handler. So also that one needs the FXML annotations since it's going to be used by JavaFX. Java mm. It can be private, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, JavaFX will be able to use it even if it's private. Um, so let's give it minimum possible visibility and keep it private. Okay, a private uh, void add handler uh, takes an action event. Mm, and what shall it do? It shall, shall uh, take uh, the um, text. Uh, from the text field and place it in the, uh, the text area. So we need to know uh, the ID of the text field and the text area. Uh, the ID of the text area is text to add field. And the um, ID of the text area is uh, all text area. All text area dot pen text um, text to add field going to get text uh, and let's add a line break as well so each uh, new text is added on a new line Okay, but the, the compiler will cannot find all text area and text to add field. So you must add such fields here so the JavaFX can inject those 
um, components, references to those components. Okay, fine. Now, now the uh, add button should work. Let's try it. Okay, uh, add some text. And that's fine. And if I hit enter here, uh -huh, we have not <laughs> added that yet. Okay, so let's uh, add the hook also from the text field. Um, that one. Text field on action. Can you try? Yeah. Add handler. Uh, save. Okay, now let's run. So now we can add with a button and we can add by hitting enter in the text field. Very good. Um, and there's still no, we have not uh, done anything about the, the control number of lines. So it's just, it just keeps adding. That remains still to do. Okay, fine. Uh, first thing done, uh, by the way, um, let's remove the handle button action. We are not using that. It was created when we created the project. There. Okay, so let's go on with the add handler. So what more should happen in the add handler? It should up update the text field here at the bottom. So we need uh, a counter. Uh, let's add a field. Uh, private uh, uh, of added lines, uh, initially zero. Oops, type private. Okay, and it should be updated here. Um, but we should also uh, write to the output text. That means we, it, the text must be accessible from the um, controller. It must have an ID. That, yeah, it has number of added number of added lines text. Okay. Um, where are we here? Um, number. Of, oops, it must also be declared. Number of added lines text dot set text. Okay, and um, let's create a constant for the uh, for the text that is always the same, so we don't have to write it in many places. Also, it's always good uh, mm, practice to create const uh, to create uh, constants for text and integers that appear all of a sudden in the program give them a name uh, so, and don't risk to misspell them or whatever uh, private static final string uh, no of added lines prefix equals um, number of added lines colon space there um, so that should be used here Oops. plus and then the counter incremented like that Okay, so now we update uh, the text uh, when a new line is added. Let's run. Add line. Now the counter is updated down here. So that's uh, great. Also this works and it works. It's the same event handler for the text field, so also that's fine. Okay, very good. Um, next, let's... Um, Let's consider th the limit on the number of lines. It should be possible to place a, li a limit on how many lines can be entered. 
So let's create a constant for the default value. Private static final int uh, default max line count uh, equals three. So the default is three. Mm -hmm. And and if the the max number of lines is reached, um, we should um, uh, disable the text field and the add button. Mm. If no uh, added lines equals um, default max line count. Okay, we must of course declare it. button add button um, add button dot set disable true and um, let's do add field dot set disable true okay run again Now only three lines can be added. One, two, three, and they are both disabled. Very good. Uh, next thing, let's um, go to the command line parameter. So then we swap to the uh, application. The command line parameter can be uh, read in the init method. That's where we normally read the command line parameters. So remember, um, when the application is launched, the args, the command line parameters, are passed to JavaFX, and JavaFX will pass them on to the init method, and that's where, where well, pass them on to the application actually, not as a parameter, but uh, as part of the application, and we will read them in the init method. Okay, and what to do then? So we get them uh, the parameters by calling a get para parameters dot get named, which, as you can see here, retrieves a map of all named parameters, and the parameter we are looking for is actually named. Mm. Um, get named, uh, but what name will it have? Uh, we have to decide that. So, um, well, let's create um, also for that one. Let's keep er everything in the controller. Uh, and we, or should it be in the application, this constant? The, this constant will hold the name of the command line parameter. Okay, let's place it in the controller. We can always move it if Later we discover it fits better in the, the uh, main, in the application. Private, uh, no, public, because it must be used in both. Public, static, final, string, um, max, line, count. Param name equals max lines. Okay, remember we have not set it on the command line yet. Uh, let's do that by the way, right? Uh, let's do it right away. Properties run parameters. We need to add a parameter. Add we named it max lines. Let's give it the value 7. So now it's added. We have a, a parameter which is a name parameter, key value pair. The name is max lines and the value is 7. So uh, that uh, parameter uh, is passed to the JavaFX here when it's launched and it can we will retrieve it here. So get named that returns the map 
get and then the name which is uh, it's uh, oops now I saw this does not follow the naming conventions uh, okay text adder controller dot max line that one yeah so this returns the value of the um, parameter uh, and what shall we do with that um, value we will place it in a system property so system using system properties is a very convenient and common way to pass command line parameters around it's not specific to JavaFX just set it as a system property here when we read it first system dot set property under the same name as it was set in JavaFX okay so um, the name is this uh, the name of the system property and this is the value of the system property which is also the value of the command line parameter with the, the same name max lines okay now we have set it as a system property and that's a very nice way to pass parameters because it means we can read it in anywhere in the program uh, in particular we are going to read it in the controller so we'll read it in the initialize method in the controller which is where we place initialization code um, so what are we going to do we are going to read it System.get property number no uh, not that one but max that one okay now we have read it so note that using the system property we could pass the parameter from the application to the controller without having a reference uh, because the system properties are always available to the uh, any class in the program um, okay but then we should uh, that's a string we should must convert it to an uh, integer there and we must also have somewhere to save it uh, private in max line count count and has the initial value ah never mind the, the init method is always executed first so it will get the value here um version, uh, let's save it then in max line count okay but the um, parse int uh, method might fail with an exception if the string to parse is not an integer so therefore we catch that exception here actually let's catch all exceptions whatever goes wrong uh, we should give the um, the, the field max line count some default value and that is of course of course the default max line count so now we should be able to add seven lines not more one two three oops did not work only it was still the default value what happened so now I looked up the bug. It was simply that I had forgotten to change here. We should not check if number of added lines reaches the default max value, but the actual max value, which is in the variable max line count. Like that. Now let's run it again. So now the max number of lines should be seven. One, two, three, four five six seven yeah so that works fine okay uh, next thing so okay let's run it again and i show what comes next so now the problem is this text down here oops this text down here it should not be text initially but should be number of added lines colon zero okay so um, that's a problem 
of course we could hard code this thing uh, I mean we could it's this one here we could hard code um, here uh, number of and so on added lines colon zero uh, but um, that way we would have kind of duplicated code the text number of added lines would appear both here uh, in this field which goes to the XML file and also in the Java code maybe no big deal you could say but uh, le let's be a bit fancy and avoid that duplicated code I think it's fine you should get used to never um, create any duplicated code if it there's any way to avoid it okay so the this is this will be done by adding a variable uh, here in, in this uh, as the value of this property and the variable will go to the text field and then we'll set the value of that variable in the Java code so the variable that will contain the um, initial text is prefixed by dollar uh, no I mean this field already has an ID right we should could use that one as a prefix uh, let's see what the ID is number of added lines text okay let's use that one number of added lines uh, text initial initial label <laughs> long name okay I copy that one so we remember uh, we say Okay, and then we should set that one in the Java code in the text adder. Text adder in the start method here, where we have access to the loader. Um, the uh, loader here <coughs> is what we will use to set the, this uh, the value of, of this uh, variable because it's a loader that reads the fxml file and can will you have to use this value. Um, so let's rewrite this line um, so we create a loader first loader loader signs um, ML loader uh, right like this yes um, and then uh, we can use that one to set the value value of the variable that will hold the label of the text loader dot get namespace so the namespace of the loader which is a hash map where we can put variable variables and the name was this long value and so that's the name of the variable and the value value of the variable text adder controller dot ah oh it's private there Uh, number of added lines prefix that's all the way up to the colon I hope yeah it is here so we just need to add the zero uh, number of added lines prefix um, and plus zero now we have written that thing there then we can remove this but we must remember to also load here the root of the scene graph is loaded by the loader <laughs> like that okay there we have it let's run oh, let's fix the import statements save run ah oops not very good <laughs> it's the the th this thing should have been replaced by the variable 
value. So the bug was actually um, here in the XML file. When we added the dollar, um, there was a slash before. Uh, so we simply remove that one. Uh, okay, and now it should work, hopefully. Yeah, now the correct line is uh, displayed. And uh, if, we, if we add uh, some text, it updates the counter. So next, let's add the uh, event handlers for these buttons. So the cancel button should do nothing, just close the program. And the OK button should print the text in the text area to uh, standard output and then close the program. So the OK button, um, uh, the action handler could be OK button handler, OK button handler, yes. And the cancel button can have cancel button handler. Okay, save. Our, oops, over to the controller that has the action handlers. So now we have to write new methods. Also annotated fxml since they will be called by JavaFX. Uh, let's write the OK button handler first. Takes an action event. Prints the text. From the all text area. And then closes the program by calling platform.exit. So that's the correct way to uh, shut down the JavaFX application. Allows all close methods to be executed. Should not do just system exit. Then for the cancel button handler. should do the same thing but not uh, print to stand it out okay so now I copied the method right that, that should be an alarm sign that we have duplicated code and the duplicated code is uh, sorry this line here shall we extract that to another method it appears also here one line of code Let's call it uh, shutdown. Yeah, that's those. So let's test run. Uh, add some text. So now when I click OK, the text should appear uh, behind uh, in standard output uh, here. And it did. Uh, next for the cancel button. Um, when I click cancel, no uh, text should appear. And it did not, so that also worked fine. Okay, uh, next thing then, uh, we want to be able to uh, add some text and then tab. Oops. Ah, now I realize why we get stuck in the uh, text field when uh, tabbing. It's because it's editable. The text field should not be editable, right? We should not be able to write text here, but only by adding from the um, text field. So I have to set change this thing here. Um, editable, no. Okay, now if we start it so now we would like to be able to add, add some text and then tab to the OK button, hit enter uh, and the OK button should be pressed. It is not right now. So there's a line of code that must be added to fix this. We will place that thing in the controller, right? And in the init method. So actually it's this line of code. The the OK button is the OK button is called OK button 
and we want we want to do is I will okay I'll write this code and then I'll explain it uh -huh. we have no um, we have not declared the okay button here we want, must declare both okay and cancel buttons because we are going to do the same thing for the cancel button Okay, now on to the OK button. There. Okay, so what happens here? So in fact, the fact is that the um, JavaFX has a property handling that is different from the common Java Beans property uh, standard with the setters and getters. But I will not explain the JavaFX property uh, mechanism. Uh, I'll just show you that what we have done here is that we have taken the focused property that tells whether the OK button has focus and, or not. And then we have bound that property to the default button property and the default button property tells which button is on the whole uh, uh, window is clicked when the user hits enter so this means that whenever the focused property is true that is when the button has focus then it becomes the default button of the application and is uh, hit when the user clicks enter so that's kind of a trick to enable this thing and that uh, the button should be clicked when the user uh, hits enter. We do the same thing for the cancel button. There, and we run. Add some text, tab, oops, to OK. It, now the button was clicked. Here is the text output. Let's test the cancel button as well. Yeah, that worked. Okay, just one thing left, and that's the tooltips. Let's add some tooltips with explaining text. There should be tooltip for this thing here and the text could be um, write text to add here for example I will just place tooltip on this button and uh, its text can be um, click to add text and here print on text to stand that out. I don't know if this is a good help text, but okay. And finally the cancel button. Um, delete all entered text and terminate. Save run that's our tooltip tooltips all over okay so that's it we are done